everyone this is Ross and um, today I want to give you guys some rooting tips I want to talk about some common problems some things to watch out for this is like the as good of a guide as I can come up with to kinda of get you guys through this um, so that I can hold you guys off until I have a lot more cuttings in here you know there's very few that are actually rooting some of these are already rooted plants that I'm, I'm just kinda of grow through the winter time um, so there's really not a whole lot to look at in here. There's not a whole lot going on in here. But I think this will kind of help you guys along the way to uh, prepare you. Until there is, of course, more going on in here and more I can show you. You know, uh, we have one bin here, one long bin that we have all the, key, uh, all the, the pots in. We're also going to have another long bin that you see back here. We just got that from the store. And we're going to have another overhead light here above that bin. And uh, we'll have basically two bins of cuttings. And that'll be it for this winter. Um, so whatever doesn't make it from that, oh well. Um, not a big deal. But in this video, like I said, I want to show you guys some tips and things that uh, you should watch out for. There's, I know there's not a whole lot to look at but there is actually quite a few things going on in here that are quite apparent to me one we have a lot of cuttings now leafing out and they've only been in here for about two to three weeks which is the perfect amount of time that you should start to see some activity whether it's root activity if you have clear pots or you're rooting them in bags you know I know there's the fig pop method that people use um, you know or you should see some leaf some buds starting to pop through that parafilm or at the very least you know or at the most some leaves so we've got that um, it's very obvious to me that by using our thermometer here it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit um, that's a good amount of temperature but we want this to be even higher and it will go higher as uh, we get into the winter time you know we're gonna turn the heater on and whatnot um, but so far the environment in here is all right and we don't want to change it too much you know once you guys find a good environment and you're seeing about 50 to 75 percent of your cuttings doing something you know something's right and you don't want to mess with it all right so that's tip number one tip number two is that we've already got uh, fungus gnats in here and fungus gnats love wet soil they love wet decaying organic matter and it's pretty much unavoidable, I think, 100%. If you have an environment like this, I mean, they've barely been in here. I think they're just almost in this closet, like they live here. <laughs> you know, they're just kind of here waiting. Um, it's really important to keep the numbers of these gnats low uh, because they will kind of eat at the roots and really make these cuttings uh, struggle. So... What I like to recommend is um, get some rice holes. That's exactly what we're going to do here very shortly. As I'm going to come in here on the top of all of these pots and I'm going to put down um, rice holes kind of as a mulch so that the fungus gnats can't penetrate the soil from the top. If they are going to penetrate the soil and lay eggs, it'll have to be through the bottom um, because they lay eggs in the soil in the organic matter and it really creates a problem so if you can kind of put a nice little um, thing in there to kind of prevent them from getting in that's really good and that's really helpful so that's what we're gonna do there's also natural which is I believe a it's a product you can use to help with gnats and you know kind of drench your soil with that my friend Steve recommends it and I know a lot of people actually use it so um, there's many options it's just you just really want to watch out for some pests that may cause problems. Another one is uh, spider mites in a dry environment like this. It's not too dry in here yet. This will drop to about 25% at the lowest humidity. And um, that 25% really attracts spider mites. Spider mites really mess with figs, guys. So you want to make sure that you got neem oil or some kind of something to 
prevent these fungus or these um, these spider mites if you see them. Another thing that's uh, kind of important I should mention is that on this particular cutting here, the parafilm's kind of coming off, and this is just what kind of happens if you don't put the parafilm on correctly, perfect, you know, or even over time the wax will kind of melt or deteriorate or whatever you know you got to make sure that these things are not getting dried out so if there's portions of the cutting that are above the soil here you got to make sure that they're constantly being covered so you know take some extra parafilm and wrap it around that particular spot if it's missing some parafilm there we do not want our cuttings drying out you know we really want them to be leafing out first you can see in here there's a fungus gnat actually flying around if you can see that I don't know if the camera's picking it up but you really want these leaves to come out and once they come out you know the cutting is usually okay at that point but um, you know it's really good idea to keep the cutting wrapped with parafilm at all time um, the other important thing I want to mention is that um, it's quite dry in here and also it's quite warm and the lights are really making things dry so the top of the soil is quite dry but the soil in these pots is not so what I like to do unless the tree has quite a bit of leaves on it like this one here I need to water this every three days believe it or not and you know, that's a really well rooted cutting at this point in fact I probably should just put it in winter storage but um, you know things like that will take up a lot of water and need a lot of water um, but right now this cutting doesn't need a single ounce of water the only thing you want to watch out for is that if these things dry out too much then the soil moisture isn't at the right level to get these cuttings to root out so um, you know if you leave them here and just have them sit here you, know, you can kind of tell by the weight they're they are losing water but at the same time um, you know you don't really have to water them so be careful with the watering obviously you know the I should say the biggest thing to defend off fungus gnats is really just not over watering that's it's really that simple because if you don't water the fungus gnats go away um, they really do they stay they like wet conditions they'll go somewhere else um, they may even die their life cycle will stop you know it's really all about controlling the water the rice holes and the natural are just if things get really bad or if you want to prevent you know the rice holes are more preventative for me the other the last thing I want to mention in this video is that you can see on this cutting here it's quite a long vigorous cutting and it's leafing out up here it's leafing out back here here and even down there so it's got four different points we don't want that we want one single point but the thing is we want to wait we don't want to take off any of these buds we don't want to take off any of these leaves we don't want to cut anything just yet we want to wait and let this thing do its thing develop one strong shoot and the strongest shoot that comes out we're gonna keep that shoot and if say this is the strongest shoot which it looks like it probably will become we're gonna cut this off at some point here like that and then the bottom here we can probably leave because um, you know there's nothing wrong with uh, leaving things down below and it's probably a good idea to leave things down below um, because the apical bud that that uh, hormone in the in the plant here is suppressing all the growth down below so usually the the topmost healthiest bud will take control and you know you normally wouldn't have to do this but sometimes figs are weird right certain nodes may have more fig mosaic virus than others and some may grow better than others so just pick the strongest one and keep everything down below because if the one if you know the one up here dies or if you know I'm kinda hesitant to even say cut this off because if this dies for whatever reason at least I got this bud left and that bud left and that bud left to then take control again and start growing vigorously so those are my biggest tips guys um, we're gonna come back at you guys again with um, an update hopefully when more cuttings are in here more progress has been made but those are the biggest things that I kinda come in here and um, do maintenance wise you know this is like a pest and maintenance update 
you know I'll come in here with the water guys um, very very infrequently but again you got to watch these things you, you kind of you don't want to baby them but you also don't want to forget about them so all right everyone thank you so much take care